This is Abe Friedanzer from CinemaDailyUS.com, and I'm thrilled to be speaking with Norni Asari and Zara Amir Ebrahimi about Shada. How are you both doing today? Great. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having Wonderful. us. Of course. I saw this film. I was at the premiere at Sundance last year, and so it's so exciting to be talking about it so many months later as it's about to debut to uh, U.S. audiences. That's amazing. I'm so glad you were there. That was a very, very special night for us. Of course, what has changed for you both in relation to the film since that point? Mm. Well, I I feel much less anxious about sharing it with audiences. <laughs> the, the very first screening you have to the public is a very, um, it's a, a, a roller coaster of emotions. So um, yeah, now, now it's, now it's really, yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed the way, uh, the way different audiences around the world have have connected with the film uh and it's been a really rewarding uh cathartic process the past 12 months and uh, i'm really excited that it's finally getting a release here in the u.s yeah the same i think i mean i'm so proud of this movie and i'm so honored and i feel so good to get this, you know, to share it with the audience and see so much emotion. And, you know, it's somehow my story too. It's not only, you know, it's not anymore Nora's story. It's uh, everyone's story. It's, uh, you know, I, I'm just, I, I feel it's more universal than even I thought. Same. Mm. You know, I since see. sometimes I get feedbacks from audience and I see not only women, but men also mm. are so touched and it's somehow their own, their story too. And uh, it's quite interesting to see how cinema can connect to people, different stories, but at the same time, mm. sharing the same stories and let people speak out after coming out of screening, you know, that's very beautiful. Of course. Have any reactions really surprised you? And if so, why? I actually was totally surprised in Sundance already that first night and just seeing people, especially men, because at some point we, we were just thinking, I think uh, it's a, uh, we are yeah. telling a woman, female story in this um, domestic violence is mostly about women. But then there were kind of young men or even like I don't know middle-aged men who just came to us and they they said that they had the same story and they had kind of the same memories from their childhood or they had kind of parents stories to share so this is really moving and uh it keeps continuing receiving this kind of feedbacks yeah yeah I mean the, at, at Sundance we won the audience award which was like it was That's amazing. it was amazing I mean it was um yeah a huge gift for me like the audience award it's the most meaningful because it means the film is connecting to people That's as, as a filmmaker the greatest gift and yeah I mean there's been so many instances um you know, in Australia, there was a woman who came to the Melbourne Film Festival premiere and came up to me after the screening. She was an Indian Australian woman, and she said that she'd left her husband a few weeks before seeing the film and was still in two minds about what to do. But in seeing the film, she realized she'd she'd made the right decision and she was, you know, going to stay on that path. So the the idea that the film is like having an a tangible impact in people's lives. Um, there was another woman actually, I don't know if I told you about this one, Zadar, but um, she, she, she was a pregnant woman who came to a screening uh, and afterwards she told, I wasn't there, but my producer told me um, she, she had actually just escaped her husband that night mm -hmm. and went to the cinema as a refuge because she had nowhere to go and it was pouring rain and she just had a, she had a suitcase with her and she just happened to come to shade to see Shader, wow. like just by wow. accident. She didn't even know what the film's about when she sat in the cinema. And uh, 
yeah and then that night my producer and his partner helped her get a hotel get her connected to the shelter the local shelter and yeah I think the film you know from from what I heard that it gave her that that strength and also the the assistance to to find you know where to go and um what services were available so it's just like those kinds of stories they just um yeah they just fill my heart because this is this is not yeah it's not just my mother and I's story but you know it's an epidemic domestic violence and the the fact that the film is giving women strength you know that's everything it's really everything I remember one of the things I was most struck by is where the film started, which they had started, they were already in the shelter. So you see them as their own people separate from Hossein. And then later on, you get to see what he's like and, and how they are around him. Did you always know that you wanted to start that way rather than showing sort of the inciting incident and behavior? The very first draft of the screenplay had the inciting incident and behavior as in the really like the last straw incident, more like it, um, and and her escape. But then from the second draft onwards, I decided to um, really focus it on life after the escape. I, I felt like, you know, audiences have seen that narrative in terms of um, the domestic violence na typical narrative. And I wanted to to explore what what's life after an escape, how that anxiety and fear follows you and, uh, you know, how, how one can move past that and stand into their power um that was why I really said it from that point and also just from like a storytelling point of view um keeping the audience guessing keeping them on their toes from the very first frame very first scene uh, in having to catch up with the circumstances that she had um and it's not yeah it's not until 30 minutes in the film that you see Hussein and holding holding back, you know, I watched a lot of Hitchcock when I was writing the screenplay. And so, you know, those elements of suspense were really important um, because they allow you to, you know, feel the the lightness and joy uh, on a much deeper level when, when you do. It's sort of like an exhale. Um, so, yeah, all of those devices were really important to creating this immersive world and experience. There are definitely moments where it feels a lot like the thriller, which isn't necessarily what you'd expect, but I think works very well. Thank you. Yeah, that was intentional. <laughs> I also think I saw the film probably maybe a month or two after I had seen Holy Spider. So it was interesting to see because that's obviously that's a much more, you know, constantly terrifying experience in some ways. Uh, were there was there anything sort of similar for you, Zara, about those two shooting experiences? I, I think I became the master of trauma and <laughs> make people sad and traumatized <laughs> after my movies <laughs> but I think in Shade Eyes she the, you know when Zara laughs it's like the whole world smiles you know the, she just fills the room with so much um lightness and joy and I think that she just brought that nuance to the character and you know in contrast to Holy Spider there is there is there is, hope, there is like a real hope and uh, celebration of womanhood. Yeah, it's not that much hard and dark for me, mm, Shada. There is this joy of life. There is this light mm. at the end, which I couldn't really feel it in Holly Spider. Holly Spider was really a noir movie for, I think, for you yeah. too. Yeah, I, I, I watched Holly Spider during Melbourne Film Festival. It was actually the, her screen, the screening was during our shoot. And I remember going to support Zara and I sat next to her and I was holding her hand. I was like, I think I nearly broke her. I was like squeezing it so hard because and covering my eyes for some sake. I found it harrowing. I'm not sure if it was the right thing to do on a night off from the shoot. But I, yeah, I, I was just in awe of her performance. And to this day, yeah, just I think the world of her. You know, I always say this is uh, somehow Shada, Holy Spider, or my, my other movies that came out yeah, last year, they are kind of part of our stories. It's just like our life mm -hmm. as Iranian women, 
but then when i sh when i share this movie with, this movie is with the uh, the rest of the world, I say that this is their, as I said, this is their story too, you know. It all about Shada for me. It's not out in France yet, but I'm sure there will be many, many uh, emotion after yeah. uh, because you know how is the number of uh, women getting hurt by their family or, as I said, even men it's high it's really high and i think i couldn't imagine this at this point when i started working on shada and nura helped me to understand more how is the situation in australia and all over the world and uh, i was quite surprised at this you know 2022 people are suffering uh, state of the, this kind of violence in this world and they don't know where to go and uh, you know yeah. Yeah, I remember at the beginning of the like in rehearsals or maybe one of our conversations, early conversations, where you were like, So so what's the women's shelter? Yeah, I didn't know the women's yeah. shelter exist, you know, like because it you know, when Zara was in Iran and even still women's shelters are only a new thing in Iran. Um and yeah, it's uh yeah, it was just amazing to me that she didn't know. And yeah. um and uh, but I think that's the case for a lot of people, especially migrant women who are coming from a place where those services don't exist. So they assume in the new place they don't either. Um, it's it's an important um, empowering film in that way because it it, it gives women the possibility of uh, having an agency and support. This is a very impressive first film for you, Nora. And I know that, Zar, you also made your first film recently with Gaina T of Tatami. Is there anything that you can preview about that? Is that going to be similar in theme, maybe getting more joyful? I assume probably not. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. <laughs> yeah, ta tatami is black and white. You can guess, you know, it just like, uh, you're going to have a hard time. To... <laughs> no joy. No, but I think, you know, we have... I, I think, you know, this life, I mean, this world is going really bad in different levels and different ways, but we still have hope. Mm. Mm. That's how for me, Shada is different, but I, I think we share our fears, our traumas through cinema, but also our hopes and the mm. uh, this is something that is common in all these movies that I've done, I think. And this is maybe related to my life and my personality too. This is these are my choices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I mean, I see in your work uh, a real, you know, because a lot of actors who leave Iran, they don't they don't necessarily go to that material that they left, if that makes sense. Like they're not mm. coming face to face with it, and I think it's so um courageous and brave of Zar to tackle these roles and in such a nuanced way and really give a face to the strength and resilience of Iranian women because you know for example like I grew up thinking my mother is the only strong amazing woman but there's millions of us and Zar is one of them and the fact that she's actually like choosing these roles to showcase uh, I think that's amazing. Because, uh, one of the reasons that I do cinema as director or the actor is just it's not only to work or just creating something it's about learning too and I think all the stories you know I, I, I feel lucky to be part of Shada's uh, movie because I learned a lot about myself about my own life about my own capacity of facing my traumas or fears mm. or feeling that light somewhere you know and th that's the case for everything I do I, I think this is how I choose you know if, if there is not something for me also to learn about myself and this world I mm. won't go for it yeah I think there is a real tendency for migrant actors and filmmakers to dissociate from their past and from the pain and suffering and that you know mm. that's so that's so valid 
you know, but it's also valid to face it and try and create beauty and art from the from the pain in order to transform it, in order to move forward in life from a place of like abundance and authenticity rather than from a place of fear and um, avoidance. Yeah, or it's not even about therapy. I hate to take it as a therapy, you know, it, it yeah. can't be a therapy, but it's a journey. It's mm -hmm. an amazing journey to mm -hmm. reproduce everything from the zero and leave it again, you know. Mm. It's wonderful feeling every time. Yeah, we're very lucky to be able to do that in our work. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You know what you want to do next, Nora? <laughs> <laughs> Romantic comedy. Um, <laughs> that's not a lie. Actually, no, my next film is a road movie. Uh, it's a female French intergenerational female friendship story about two Iranian women in exile in Paris and and what, I'm hair casting director she is she it's is not. quite literally my casting director and she's doing an amazing amazing job and uh yeah so it's a new adventure it's uh it's an adaptation of an Iranian American novel by Masa Rahmani Noble and you know I'm really excited to yeah to be doing this new challenge and it's an adaptation so uh whilst it's you know being inspired by the book it's it has a lot of me in the screenplay too so uh yeah I'm excited hopefully we'll be able to shoot later this year wonderful well I'm very excited to see those next projects for more great conversations like this please subscribe to the Cinema Daily US YouTube channel and I hope that everybody will see Shada when it comes out in U.S. theaters. And I'm eager to hear what some of the reactions from American audiences are to it. Yes, I hope everyone enjoys the film and tells their friends to go and check it out on the big screen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you both. It was a real pleasure to speak with you. Thank you. Thank you.